Hello again, youth conference and middle school friends. I'm Carol Steele from the program department in Montreat, and this is the second episode of Montreat Now. Today, we'll hear from three of our conference leaders for this summer. Mitch Phillips from the Kirk in Kansas City, Missouri. Laura Becker from Northminster Presbyterian Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And Mark Iacomelli, veteran speaker and youth leader all the way from Oregon. They're all part of our leadership lineup for weeks five and six of Youth Conference this summer, and we are delighted to welcome them to Montreat now. I'm Mitch, as Carol said, and I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I have twin boys that are 21. Oh, holy moly! And um, I have been married for a very long, wonderful time. I'm very excited to be one of the recreation leaders for weeks five and six at Montreat, and even more excited to be part of Montreat now. So I'm going to pass it on to my counterpart. Are you ready? I'm ready. Woo! I caught that so fast. I am Laura Becker. I am the pastor at Northminster in Chattanooga and I'm leading recreation with Mitch for weeks five and six for the high school youth conferences. Uh, I have two daughters, 12 and 17, and I am excited to be with you here and look forward to being with you all this summer. And now I will pass it along to my dear friend, Mark. I it. And partly that's because my name is Mark Iaconelli and I have a chair on wheels. <laughs> and that's just one of the exciting special effects you're going to see if you join us at camp this summer. Glad to be with everyone from the great Northwest. We're recording this the day before Monday, Thursday. And Monday, Thursday, of course, is uh, an important marking in the Christian calendar. It's when the disciples gathered with Jesus for the Last Supper. And we thought we would tell stories of a memorable meal that we've had in our lives. And in thinking about that prompt, I remembered a time 16 years ago, I got a phone call that my father had been in a, in a car accident. And it was late at night. Um, my family immediately rushed into a car. We drove five hours north. And by the time we got there, he had passed away. And when you're hit with grief like that, particularly when you're not expecting it, you're disoriented, uh, you kind of fall into this hollow space, and it's difficult to eat, it's difficult to sleep, you're just kind of taken over with grief and sorrow. And that's how we were for three or four days through the preparation of the memorial service and all the family coming in. And I remember uh, being with my siblings and and cousins and uncles and aunts and everybody there. And it would, had been about five days since he had passed away. And I came into the kitchen early in the morning and there was my brother and he was cutting up potatoes. And then my sister walked in and she went and saw what he was doing, went into the refrigerator, got out pepperoncinis. Now my family's Italian. And then my other sister came in and she started looking around the freezer where he knew my, where she knew my dad kept uh, pepperoni. And pretty soon we started making the same breakfast that my dad used to make a couple of times uh, a week when we were growing up. And all of a sudden the smells came back into the kitchen, the potatoes started cooking, the pepperoncinis were uh, with the eggs and the, and the pepperoni. And you could feel not only my dad's presence in spirit, but you could feel that we were all going to be okay, even in the midst of this, of this uh, hard time. So that's a meal that, that I thought of and, and remembered. In fact, I got up early and made it again this morning thinking about this, this story. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Um, your dad touched a lot of lives. So thank you for sharing him and yourself with us. Um, I am also a preacher's kid and it's not always very funny or very fun. Um, during the big Easter and Christmas celebrations, there's like a plethora, a multitude of worship services that you have to attend. I don't have to attend them anymore. I attend them because I love them and so excited that during that time I was made to go. Well, so my dad would always be really exhausted and didn't want to make a big show about our Christmas or Easter dinner. So what we did, we ordered pizza. Generic taco pizza from Casey's, and it was delicious. But what made this meal even more special was the fact that we took intentional time to sit at the table together, 
Once we finished eating, we either played some board games or had friendly art competitions. I always won. So that is one of my favorite meals. Just being together, being casual. We were probably still in our pajamas, resting from the big holiday, but I loved being together and then having more family fun afterwards. Oh, I love that. And I love hearing as a pastor now who takes her children to so many things at church <laughs> events and wondering how they will feel about them as they are adults. That is lovely to hear, Mitch. Um, and I think for me, because it's Holy Week, I've been thinking a lot about uh, the Monday Thursday communion service that we do at the church where I serve, um, because it is one of my favorites. And it is often one of the more memorable meals that, that I have shared. And I'm sad that our congregation can't be together for it this week. But the way that we do it, we begin with this meal around tables in um, kind of a separate room, not the sanctuary at our church. And we pray and we sing and we eat together. And some years we've had to pack in extra chairs to try to squeeze in everybody so that everybody can find a spot around the table. And as I was thinking about the warmth and the love of that community, it also reminded me that not every meal is like that. Um, and I'm reminded of this letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. And the early Christians celebrated communion pretty differently than I would imagine most of us do in our churches, typically. Um, it wasn't tearing off a little piece of bread and dipping it in a cup or passing around plates or baskets of bread and taking little cups of juice. It was this big community meal. And everybody would come together and eat and drink and remember and celebrate the presence of the risen Christ with them. But in this particular case, in the church in Corinth, Paul had gotten word that maybe this great meal wasn't being made available to everyone. And some people were getting there immediately and they were eating and drinking everything before some of the other people could even show up to get to the table. And so Paul calls them out. And he reminds them that as the body of Christ, they should ensure that all are welcome and fed. And it made me think about how during this odd time that we are in of pandemic and quarantine, that we've seen people hoarding things out of this sense of scarcity, um, trying to stockpile toilet paper and hand sanitizer and eggs and flour and milk. And it reminds me that fear can be very powerful in our lives. And the early Christians were no strangers to living in scary and uncertain times. But as Paul reminded them and us today, we are still connected in spite of our brokenness and our isolation. We're still connected to our youth groups and our church communities and our friends and our Montreat Youth Conference community that spans space and time. You're called to be the body of Christ from all of our socially distant places and recognize that we share in a communion of God's love that is bigger than any one table. And thanks be to God for that. And as Jesus Amen. gave his commandment at the Last Supper to his disciples, we must remember to love one another. For it is by that love that the world will know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Laura, as I was listening to you talk, you know, I just thought one of the most loving things we do is we feed each other. We grow food, we prepare food, we, we set a table, and it's such a sacred practice as Christians to get together. And it helps us move from that fear you were talking about and anxiety. You know, when you're, when, when you're sitting at a table with people you love and you're being fed and nourished, it helps you calm down a little bit, feel mm -hmm. loved and remember that connection that you brought up. And it's where Jesus, of course, says, you know, when we have communion, you know, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. And it helps us remember that we are held by a greater source of love. I, so so I, I really resonate with, with what you said and uh, hope that every time we eat a meal, even if it's cereal in the morning, somebody grew that food, somebody purchased that food, somebody drove it to your mm -hmm. store, somebody brought it home, and that's another reminder of how we're all loved. Thank you for that. So you can see that meals are really important, not only in our own individual families, but as the body of Christ and in remembrance of Jesus Christ. So when you eat together, whether it be virtual eating together or in person together with the family that you are quarantined with, remember that you are loved you are the body of Christ, and that we are all in this together. 
we are here for you. And God is here for us. And with that notion, we can't wait to be with you this summer during weeks and five. And if we don't get to see you during weeks five and six, whoops, did I say it wrong? Anyway, five and six, um, we will be praying for you in the weeks that you will be attending at Montreat. So thank you for taking your time for being with us. And we'll be back with Montreat now. And I just have really enjoyed getting to be with Michelle and Laura and Carol this morning. And so peace of Christ to all of you and to all those who are watching. I'm going to pass the peace right now. Thank you. And peace be with you. Wow. I tried. Anyway, peace of Christ be with you. And somebody threw it to Carol. Yes. <laughs> that was amazing. She caught it right before you threw it. I know. Technology is good. amazing. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. What a team. Thank you so much for sharing God's word with us today. It's been good to be with you. And uh, conferees, we'll see you again next week. And when we meet, we'll meet returning youth conference preacher Cece Armstrong and first time youth conference music leader Tony McNeil. Please stay in touch with us on Instagram. We have loved seeing you post your Montreat memories. It's meant a lot to us. Uh, we're also grateful for all the calls uh, and the emails, the notes and the financial contributions that we've been getting and hearing from over the last week or so that have helped us to feel supported and loved in this time. Tomorrow, keep an eye out for Richard DuBose's weekly uh, Montreat News check-in that you can find on our website. And God be with all of you until we meet again. <laughs>